Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to do another episode of tricky exam questions. It's a new series of videos that I'm doing. In this particular one, we are going to focus on homeostasis and thermoregulation. Now, all these questions were chosen because either the question itself is a little unusual, it's something that we don't see very regularly, or the questions themselves have an unusual memo that goes with them and I wanted to bring them to your attention in case you see something similar in your exams and in your finals. Now, if you want to attempt the question, I suggest you pause the video now because then I'm going to go through the question with you and then show you how to answer it with the memo at the end. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. And if you're in matric looking to get that distinction in the finals, you should think about purchasing my study guide. It's available on my website, missangler.co.za. So let's get into the question now and break it down. It says the diagrams below represent the structures in skin of two people. Both were in the same room at the same time, but one person was exercising while the other person was sitting still. The skin surface temperature in both uh of both people were measured after 10 minutes. Now, they don't actually tell you anything else. They don't tell you, well, which is the exerciser and which is not the exerciser. They don't tell you anything. You now have to be able to determine that from the picture. So let's have a look at the two pictures and their differences, and then that will ultimately tell us the answer. So the two main differences I'm hoping that you can see immediately when you spot the difference is going to be the size of the blood vessels and also you'll notice it looks like something is coming out of a structure. Now the two differences here is that first of all person B is sweating, that is sweat coming out of a sweat gland. And then person B also has uh, their blood vessels that are dilated, which means they are bigger, right? which means more blood is flowing through them. And ultimately, it means this person is hotter. And they are hotter because they've been doing something. And more than likely, the person who is person B is the exerciser. And person A is probably the sitting still person. So now that we sort of uh, decided that based off just the visuals, now we go into the questions knowing that we've identified the people correctly. And the first question says, which person A or B was exercising? It's clearly person B. Um, why I say that? Well, we actually have to say why in the next question because it says give two visible reasons. So that means it must be in the picture to answer your question to 3.4.1. And it is literally the two things I mentioned to you just now. Number one, it is the sweat that's being produced. They're sweating. And secondly, the dermal arterioles are dilated. There is vasodilation happening. That's how I know that person has been exercising. Now we come to what I term the tricky question and what sort of would throw some metrics off because they don't know what to answer. And that is because there is a little overlap with the nervous system in this question, which you shouldn't be blindsided by in the final exam. Um, they are allowed to do this. And in actual fact, in your exam guideline, it actually says, one of the bullet points, if I remember correctly, says that there are going to be overlap questions between endocrine and the nervous system and homeostasis in the nervous system. So if we look at the next question, it says, name one hormone that would have the same effect on the blood vessels that is observable in person A. So first of all, we need to discuss what's happening in person A. Now, person A over here, their blood vessels are constricted, okay? Now, remember, that means they're smaller. Now, there is only one other hormone in the whole body that has the ability to constrict your blood vessels. And it does this in emergency situations because it wants to take all the blood from the surface of your skin and push it down into your muscles, into your heart, so that you can have a fight or flight response. And that hormone, everybody, is adrenaline. That's why I think this is a bit of a tricky question, because not everybody would know that, and you wouldn't associate the two together, but I would like you to know that and remember this one maybe for future. So let's go into question 3.4.4. 
This one is also a tricky question. It's a tricky question because it requires you to interpret the diagram correctly. It's a tricky question because often um, matriculants answer in the negative, which is not what we want in this case. They talk about the wrong person, basically. And I'm going to show you how to correctly answer this whole question. So let's have a look at the question first. It says, after 10 minutes, the skin surface temperature of each person was measured and the results were as follows. And this is the surface skin temperature. Person A was at 37.2, but person B was at 36.6. Now, I know you're looking at that and thinking, but wasn't person B the one who was exercising? Yes, they were. But remember, the whole point of thermoregulation is to regulate your body temperature. So if you are hotter, because you're exercising, then naturally your body will start to cool itself down, right? That's the point of thermoregulation. So these results are not incorrect, but they are there to trick you because let's read on further. It says, explain why the skin temperature of person A was higher after 10 minutes. Now, the first thing, Matrix, I want to say to you is this. Do not talk about person B at all. That is when you are answering in the negative. And what that means is, if the question is asking you about person A, don't tell me about person B. Don't say anything about them. Don't say that, well, person A is this, but person B is that. Or this is happening in person A. However, in person B, it's happening and this it's, and that. And no, we don't want to hear about person B. We only want to hear about what's happening in person A. So for three marks, it's an explain question. Let's remember that an explain question must always have a minimum of two parts to it. One, you always have your statement, right? The second part is your reason. Now, because this is out of three, you need two reasons and so on and so forth if the reasons increase in mark allocation. So in order to write your statement, keep this in your mind at all times and you can apply it to any explain question. For this one, tell me what about this person A tells us they have a higher skin temperature. The thing that they have is they have constricted blood vessels. Okay. Now, if that's our statement, we need to give two reasons. Or in this case, the reasons are, well, if there are constricted blood vessels, then there will be less heat loss. And there will also be less sweating. Now, it doesn't actually matter which order you put this in. You could have put sweating first and then less heat loss. In actual fact, it might make more sense to say there's less sweating, therefore there is less heat loss. But that is how you would explain why person A is warmer on their skin surface. Now, here is the memo for the equations we went through. Now, it is very simple. As you can see, it's a short, sweet answer, but seven very valuable marks. And to be honest, if we think about it, if we didn't know that the answer was adrenaline, we would have lost that mark. And potentially, I have noticed a lot of students lose marks in a question like 3.4.4 because they don't say the statement with the reasons. So potentially, what could have been a very easy, straightforward, quick question that got you seven marks is actually a disguised, tricky question that potentially you might have only gotten three out of seven. Now, if you like this video, make sure you are subscribed. I'm posting many more of these tricky questions leading up to exams. Um, they're going to be a whole bunch more. Um, and keep your eyes peeled, everyone, for my exam prediction video. I know you've all been waiting for it. It will be coming out on the 11th of November, 2022, just in case you're watching this video, maybe in the future in 2023. Um, and I will go predict what will be in paper one and then the paper two prediction will come out shortly after but i'll let you know that date very soon if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a like and i will see you all again soon bye